I'll be honest with you, buying camera lenses are addictive. And there's a reason why we have a term for it. Gas, gear acquisition syndrome. But what if there are one lens that could rule them all? Today we're gonna to talk about a lens that could be that, the Tamron 35 to 150 millimeter F2 to F2.8. And it's really exciting. Due to physical limitations, we can't actually have an end game lens. Basically, we all want a large aperture, big zoom range, an extremely lightweight and affordable lens. These all are in direct conflict with each other. You can get a large aperture zoom lens like f1.8 with a zoom, but you'll end up with it being very heavy due to the large glass elements required. And if you're gonna have a zoom, you can only do so much before it becomes a ginormous lens. Then you can have your large zoom lens, which typically have poor image quality. These typically are f3.5 to f5.6 and really can only be used in bright daylight. And the image quality usually suffers as a result. Typically, these are often called super zooms or tend to have image quality like your kit lens, which comes with the camera for free. My favorite thing about Tamron is that they're working with non-standard focal lengths and opening up the aperture, allowing it to be lighter and sometimes more affordable. Tamron is not sponsoring this video, but they did send out the Tamron 35 to 150 f2 to f2.8 for me to review. Normally, while they do the affordable lenses, this lens is not quite that. It's actually a little bit more premium. This is basically the dream lens for people who want one lens and nothing else. And I actually really love that concept. I hate switching lenses and I hate spending money on other lenses and then I feel bad for not using them on a regular basis. But having a dream lens costs a little bit extra money and weight. Let's take a look at how useful it is. At 35 millimeters at the wide end, you're not necessarily gonna be vlogging with this lens. Honestly, it might break your arm to do so. What it's good at is to take photos of your family, your dog, travels, etc. The F2 at the wide end is very nice and really opens it up for low light capabilities that the other zoom lenses don't have. And I really don't think there's any other options in the Sony lineup that allows F2. For Sony, we're kind of stuck at zooms at f2.8 or the crop zoom, like I mentioned, the Sigma 18-35 f1.8. So this is actually a new revelation that I'm really excited for. For this lens, it holds f2 all the way to 38 millimeters and then it transitions to f2.2. And at the long end, it's f2.8. 150 millimeters at the long end is great when you're traveling. You can take pictures at the zoo, pictures from a boat, portraits of your spouse. It definitely covers a lot and it's nice not to change lenses. A super zoom like this allows you to skip the changing lenses and enjoy more of your time shooting or going about your day. So how does it feel? Honestly, this lens feels heavy and higher quality than the Zoom Duo, the classic Tamron 20 to 75, as well as the 75 to 180. But it's just not a comparison. This lens feels extremely heavy due to the large glass elements required to offer you f2 at the wide end. The zoom ring and focus ring are well dampened and it feels amazing to use. It's as big as a 24 to 70 G Master, so if you're trying to save weight, I don't think this lens is it. You're definitely gonna have to get used to that. Sony's cameras are not very large nor very heavy, so it may feel a bit unbalanced for a lot of you. As for quality, the image quality of this thing is insane. The focus breathing is minimal, which is something that plagues cheaper lenses. And personally, I'm not much of a pixel peeper, but I appreciate sharpness. I think it's very nice and the images that come out of this are amazing. Now for my use case, what would it be for? I would love to use this lens for client shoots as long as they're outside. I think for my work with the restaurants in small kitchens, I would miss the 24 millimeter wide end or at least 28 millimeters like with the Tamron. I think that having from the 70 to 150 millimeter range in a pinch is very useful to get those punched in shots and really magnify what I'm looking at. Not having to switch lenses is a godsend. Swapping lenses on shoots, especially as a solo shooter, takes up too much time. For shooting YouTube videos like this, I actually love the 35 millimeter focal length. 35 is just tight enough where I can get some background separation, but not so tight that it feels like you're staring at me from a distance and not so wide that it makes me look fatter than I already am. Now, is it necessary? Not really, but it can allow me to slim down my total lenses owned. I can use my 16 to 35 f2.8 G Master and the Tamron 35 to 150 f2 to f2.8. Done and done. Now I got ultra wide at 16 to about 20 and I got normal wide to normal, 20 to 35. And then for everything else, I can have the Tamron to cover everything. And because at 35 F2, I can have a nice little bokeh machine without having to keep the 35 millimeter F1.8. That's pretty nice. Like, I don't think I'll miss that little bit of extra bokeh from F2 to F1.8 if it means I don't have to own another lens. Now, of course, we have to talk about the extra function of the lens. I can't really go through all of it, but check out the video by Dunn and Did It. He covers so much of the functionality and I'm really excited just as he is about the possibilities of this USB-C port and the firmware updates that Tamron can push. Now, what are my final thoughts on this lens? It really has to do with the price. Honestly, it's very expensive. At 
that is 24 to 70 G master pricing, that lens being $2,200. And if you compare it to the Tamron 28 to 75, that being 879 for the original version and 899 for the G2, it's twice the price. Now, don't run away just yet. This Tamron 35 to 150 f2 to f2.8 can possibly replace both Tamron 20 to 75 as well as the Tamron 75 to 180, depending on your needs. You'll lose a little bit on the wide end and you lose a little bit on the long end, but you have a one lens solution that covers a lot. So like with anything in the other hobbies, it all boils down to preference. So if you really want to have one lens and still have low light performance and bokeh, and you don't want to deal with switching lenses and getting primes, there's definitely a lens for you. And that's the Tamron 35 to 150 f2 to f2.8, as well as the 75 to 180. They're like different tiers. F2 is crazy, okay? Bokeh, just bokeh. And personally, I would love to have this lens as a one lens solution. And if I need anything ultra wide, I would use my phone. I don't shoot landscapes in which I need ultra wide. It's all going to boil down to what your needs are. And if you value having less lenses and you hate switching lenses and you want a one lens solution that fits all your needs, then consider this lens. Now, if you already own multiple zooms and primes, this lens just kind of feels like a luxury. And it really is. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Is it too expensive? Is it worth it? Or do you think having a shorter zoom range and having a lighter, cheaper lens is worth it? Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you learned something about this new product. I'm really excited about all the new lens technologies, really dethroning Sony as the only viable lens option. Does it charge a lot? We'll get back to the keyboard content but I will be incorporating more tech. And if you have any other questions about cameras down below, I've been shooting for over a decade, photo, video, everything under the sun. I'm a nerd and I love talking nerd in the comment section. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.